for Draymond, they were uh, they were antics. Let's face it, like antics, antics isn't something that got me here. And so when I look back on these situations, it's like, can you remove the antics? I'm very confident I can remove the antics. And I'm very confident if I do remove the antics, no one's worried about how I play the game of basketball. You know, nobody's worried about how I carry myself in the game of basketball, but it's the antics. So that's my focus. You know, it's not on changing who I am completely. You don't change the spots on the leopard. It's just not going to happen. And I'm not going to try to set some unrealistic expectation of like, who's this person going to be? Like, it's not real. And that's not sustainable. I've always said before, I, I know how to be me a lot better than I can be anyone else. But in saying that, can I accept the fact that my antics has been over the top? Of course. Can I remove those? Am I capable of removing those? Of course. I think with, without that, then I don't think there is much of an issue. But it's the antics that can go. And I've made a commitment to do things to make sure that those don't creep in. I wonder how this one grabs you. Because this was oh, the Oh, that's this, the one. That's the well, one. It's right. And that's it, the, to me, that's why? the money. Why, why is that the one? Because what he said, and again, if you're going to take him at his word, and I, I'm taking him at his word, even though I have had a hard time doing that in the past, what he said at the top of that was, the antics aren't what got me here. The antics, the antics are something that I can get out of my game. The antics, the antics aren't who I am. I'm better at being me than I am at being anybody else. But the antics is something that I can change. So you've got Draymond the player, you've got Draymond the skilled player, and then as a, an outgrowth of that, you've got Draymond the competitor. An outgrowth of that is Draymond the, and I, I say maniac, but I say it in the best possible way, and the outgrowth of maniac is where we get to the antics. Can you cut out the antics and then keep the rest of the Draymond and have him still just be a player who walks up to that line and maybe a little bit over that line without the antics? That, I think, can be a productive dream on. Well, I don't it's disagree antics, with you, Mark. Mark. I'll also say, though, that this was the only part of the press conference that made me roll my eyes a little bit. And it's not because I don't believe him. But if you're going to make it that easy to change the antics, is that something that I can stop doing? Of course. Of course. Uh, I'm a leopard. You're not going to change my spot. He said that today. But I can change the antics. And I wanted to go, then why haven't you? He hasn't had to. Yeah, he has. No, he hasn't had he's to. He's literally detailed how much he's already cost the team. It's urgent from a professional standpoint because I wasn't hurt. At least my body wasn't hurt. My mind was hurt. My feelings was hurt. Uh, but it wasn't like some injury cost me off the floor. So it's very urgent because I've cost my team enough. I've cost this organization enough. You know, and so... It's not a time for me to just come back and be like, all right, I'm going to take my time and get back when I can. No, like you caused this yourself. And so you don't get the grace. And although I'm very appreciative of our organization, number one, for the support. But number two, they're putting the plan together to ramp up. If it was up to me, I would love to come back and play right now. Reality is it's probably not the best thing for me or the best thing from an organizational standpoint and what that looks like moving forward and, and the risk of injury and all those things. But you know, there's a human component of this as well. And you sit home and you watch these games, and as a competitor, you want to help. I mean, if you are approaching a cliff, right, you're walking toward a cliff, Wiley Coyote, um, just because your toes are now at the very, very edge, you say, well, now you have to stop. I would argue you could have stopped a few steps ago. So that's kind of what I mean. Right, but he didn't have to. But it, no, but he did if he wanted to not affect the team in a negative way, which he literally admitted that he did. As far as this team goes, definitely affected this team in a negative way. It can be repaired. Like, we're still, what, 36 games into an 82-game season? There's a chance to make it right, and that's my goal, and that's my focus. Okay, but if you admit that you affected the team in a negative that's all I'm saying. If, maybe he didn't think that 13 well, games or, ago. Or maybe they aren't that easy to fix. But I guess the way he talked about the antics made it sound like they are, in fact, the only thing that I listened to today and did not feel authenticity. It's like if the, he made it, well, that's easy. I can fix that. Well, it's like, so wait a minute. I thought those were part of you. But if they're easy to fix... 
That means that they were concocted in some sort of a way, and you can just eliminate it with ease. And if that's the case, I would ask him, why now? Like, if I had been in that presser today, that would have been my follow-up. Why did it take until, if the antics are that easy to stop, why not till now? Well, because now he has to. And it's like when you have, and I don't know if you've ever been a part of an intervention where you get a friend who has an issue with substances or gambling or both or something completely different, and you all get in a room and it's like, okay, now, now we're at that point where you have to change. You have to change your antics. And I'm not saying that he had a clear-cut intervention, but that's kind of what the league has done. They basically said to him, no more, no more of anything. Right. No more of your antics, your flagrants, your technicals, your assists, your rebounds, your turnovers, your buckets, your threes, your makes, your misses. It all stops. It all stops until we decide that you can come back and do it again. So when he has that moment to step back and realize all the things that he's done that has hurt the team, and you think about the antics, and you go, well, I mean, the antics is like the one thing, the easiest thing that he can control is the antics. The next the most difficult thing will be losing his control against other players, losing his control against the officials, losing his control against his teammates, losing his control against his coach. All those things, I think, are more difficult than the antics. Right. So I, I do I, think that he's right in terms of, oh, I can stop the antics. Well, it's just it's not the first message. Like, I, I'm, I'm with you when you say, well, he's going to stop now because he has to. Right. I would argue, though, if that's the case, like, hello, the message has been given to you at least five times already. Sure. And you chose sure. you chose to not uh, change the antics, even when you were given a suspension earlier this year and told this is really serious, you've got to stop the antics. He came right back out with the antics. With so the antics, yeah. Maybe this, yeah, maybe this is finally when he got shaken. Sure. May, may, maybe. And I think but that, I that's argue, possible. It's like, it's like, really? Like, really? It took you this long to finally take someone else's guidance seriously? Yes. And, I mean, we okay. can't. And you and I have both been in situations with friends, family, or both oh, where. I get it. Yeah. It's like you've had your friend where it's like, dude, how can you not, how can you not stop this behavior? It's like, what are you waiting? Are you waiting for rock bottom? So now you're waiting for whatever to happen to you to where it's like, okay, now, now I'm ready to stop with the antics. And I, in terms of basketball rock bottom, I can't speak to Draymond's mindset, but hearing him talk reminds me a lot of some of the people who I've known and been close to in terms of what they've sounded like coming out of that rock bottom moment where it's like, whoa, I didn't realize that I was, Drinking that much or doing all these. Totally. I didn't realize I was, my no. antics were so far off the reservation that I didn't realize it until I had time to step away. No, when you're in it. When you're in it, you're of often course, the last yeah. to know. Like that, that that's what, you know, yeah. I hate keep bringing this up, but this is, that for me, that's absolutely what the number one message was um, when, uh, when I went through divorce, for example. Right. And everyone's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You were the last to know, dude. Like, and and I get that. And he talked about that today. When you're in it, uh, oddly, many times you're the last one to know. You're the last one to see it clearly. Your emotions are way too tied up in everything. So I acknowledge that right. here. I get it. I'm just telling you that in everything I listened to today, it was the one moment where I went, come on, man. Really? Are the antics that easy to get rid of? Then show me. Because right. if they are really that easy to get rid of, how do we get to now before you decided to get rid of them? But the, 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 they've been asking you for a while. You punched a teammate last yeah. year. Well, and, 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 and I, that didn't stop you? I think about the ejection against Memphis, which was not last year, but the year before in the playoffs, yeah. when he gets ejected and he runs around the court and he's doing his WWE, like getting the crowd incited. That, to me... Is antics, antics and, for sure. I mean, when when you choke out uh, Gobert, that that's partly antics, but that also is, I think, something else that he needs to control is that that ability to control the rage. Because yeah, you could have jumped in and defended your teammate, but 
the way he grabbed hold of Gobert and brought him about 27 feet to the uh, the foul line extended inside the arc with 12 seconds left on the choke clock, that to me was excessive, and that might have been antics, but to me, the antics that he's talking about go far beyond just the on-court like flagrants and stuff. Uh, Steve Kerr, 90 minutes. Let's take some calls. How about Dave in Fresno? Hi, Dave. What you doing? Hey, guys. I'm listening to what you guys got to say. I want to just, you know, put some words out there. If Draymond's listening, I got some great advice for him. And you guys can tell me what you think. I would just say take advantage of this additional opportunity you've been given. I know it's been it's like a cat with nine lives here with Draymond, but Dude, he's been playing with the greatest teammate in the history of sports. And this is not being talked about enough, in my opinion. Steph Curry is the greatest superstar teammate. I'm not saying ability, but as far as a superstar and being a teammate, I see zero zero blemishes. I've never heard a bad talk to anybody, any teammate, rookie, vet, any coach. He, he just shows up to play, and he's, he's gotten the back for three months. And Draymond, whether you guys are going to win a title or not, he's still playing. He's still playing a high level. Enjoy this time. Enjoy this contract that you just signed with this superstar person and Steph Curry and teammate. Like, I, it's not that hard. That all this, whether he's going to do it or not, it's all talk. It's talk is cheap for Draymond. He could say whatever he wants yesterday. We all got to see it. Now, whether we're going to see it, that, that remains to be seen. But I'm just saying, Draymond, if you're listening, Take advantage of the opportunity. Well, nobody else can say this. But to me, Steph Curry is the greatest teammate, superstar teammate in any sport. I've never heard any bad reports or anything. Maybe I, you know, hasn't been reported. I don't know. But I, and he's gone to bat for him. So I would just say, enjoy this, Draymond. Yeah, you have a rare opportunity. Enjoy it, Dave. No doubt. Thanks, man. And it, it feels to me like some of what you just said there, Dave, was similar to what Steve Kerr said to Draymond when he went over to his house, at least according to the reports that we've heard, um, in, in that Steve was sort of suggesting him, dude, don't, this has been amazing. Don't end it the wrong way. Right. Don't, don't, don't tarnish what's been incredible. And all of you, Steph included now, should feel some gratitude for it as opposed to, yes, you want credit. Yes, you did this. You did that. We get it. But... All of this is a stew. It's it's a mixture. And none of it works without all of the pieces. So Draymond does not have his Hall of Fame career if he doesn't play with Steph and Clay. And what I think is also important here, I believe that Steph Curry feels like his career is not exactly what it is without Draymond Green. That's why they're so loyal to each other. Right. Led to an interesting question today, by the way, when he was asked if he felt concerned that maybe he cost Steph part of his prime. I don't necessarily look at it as costing him some moments of his prime because we're all in this together, right? Like, one of us fell, we're all failing. Uh, it's a team sport. I think for me personally, I care more about the person. How am I affecting the person? I can care less about a prime, if I'm honest, because I don't see his prime coming to an end no time soon. But, like, how are you affecting the person that care about you? You know, I spoke about the, the Stephen A incident on my podcast. Like, then that's something he got to live with, you know? Forcing him to carry more weight than he necessarily would have to carry. What effect does that have on him? Even more so from a basketball standpoint. Like, it matters more to me how I affect the person. I wonder what Steph thinks. Um, although his actions certainly suggest one direction here. I hear people say this a lot. Draymond cost us a title. Or he cost us two titles. Here's the question. Are you worried that you cost Steph part of his career? I think Steph looks at it and goes, I don't know that my career is what it is without Draymond. Right. So you can say, okay, it cost you one or two, but we have four, and we wouldn't have those either. And we're not even halfway through this year. So, And I think Draymond's right about that when he says, we're, we got 46 more games to figure this thing out. So you didn't cost Steph this year yet, and now Draymond's back. So... What did you really cost Steph? Because the one year that, that you missed and Steph missed and Clay missed and you went 15 and 50, well, that led you into the lottery and you were able to get James Wiseman, but you blew the pick. So did that cost Steph a year out of his prime when, when Draymond sat and Steph was hurt and Clay was out? I mean, there's, I don't think that there's anything 
that Draymond owes to Steph in terms of his prime. He owes it to himself, and he owes it to his employer, not to Steph. I don't know. I mean, Steph Curry has responded to all things Draymond by clearly telling the organization, you better go give him four more years. Right. And a hundred million more dollars. So that's how Steph feels. I mean, <laughs> right. That's how Steph feels. So Draymond doesn't get that hundred million dollar contract if no. Steph is worried about his prime being affected by Draymond. Steph knows full well what having Draymond as a teammate means and has meant and likely will mean. It means that these sorts of things are on the table. Um, next up, D in Walnut Creek. Hi, D. What's going on? You know, with Willard and Dibs. Hey, how you guys doing? Happy New Year. I'm cooking up some uh, neck bones for tonight. Yeah! But, Happy New Year, you know, Dave. Uh, you know, I'm looking at some old ACDC videos, you know, and, and I go back and I look at old videos, and, I, and I'm and i always re-entertained. So let's revisit this four-ring circus that is Draymond Green. And the last ten games without him have not been entertaining at all. And, you know, it. Draymond is Draymond, and everybody's screaming, guillotine, guillotine, we want his head. But that ain't going to happen. Let's trade him. Who are they going to get that's better than Draymond at this point? You, you can't do it. They're going to have to draft, draft sharp again to replace Draymond. That's all I got to say for now, guys. Hey, D, just one quick question, uh, and this is a, a very important question. Who is the MVP of ACDC? Oh, got to be the, the, the guitar guy. You go back and look at that Sao Paulo uh, uh, video, and that guitar solo where he goes up in the middle of the crowd is just yeah. incredible. Yeah, and thank you for joining and, us. You know, the correct answer is Bon Scott. Uh, he's talking about Angus Young, the lead guitarist. Great, but when Bon left and Brian Johnson replaced Bon Scott, still a good band, but not nearly as good as when Bond was there. Okay. Bond Scott is the correct answer. Super random, but uh, but yeah. He said he was watching old oh, ACDC videos. Oh, I'm talking to both of you. <laughs> so I had to give him the follow-up question, I the was proper gonna... follow-up question. I... Bond died when you were probably five years old. Yeah, so there you go. 1980. I was going to answer C when you said who's the <laughs> MVP of ACDC. The letter C. Because he's in there twice. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a decent answer. Uh, that, that would have been my answer. Bon Scott is the correct answer. Which also has For those of you scoring at yeah. home. Okay. 888-957-9570. Yeah, there's no, there's no trade in Draymond. Okay, the idea of him being entertaining. Let's, let, let's pull that apart for just a second. Um, I mostly agree with this. Draymond is a lot. He's a lot. He's exhausting. He's hard to handle. He makes a lot of mistakes. And this is sports, so we're all allowed to react to that. And we can react negatively if we want at times. And it, it seems some Warriors fans have certainly gotten to the point where now it's just an overall negative. It's just a Heisman stance like, I don't want to even talk about or think about Draymond anymore. We're, we're done with him. But okay, yeah, let's go the other direction. Isn't, to a degree, the other direction kind of what we're fighting against with the San Francisco Giants, isn't it a little bit? I mean, we're all sitting here going, if we're just going to make it about the sport, like we're literally going to robotically just put people in uniforms and put them on the field. And you've all decided you hate that. So maybe that gives a little bit of a window into why I do tend to lean in the direction of positivity with Draymond, I fully acknowledge all of the annoyance, the exhaustion, the bad. I see it. I get it. Is it a net negative? Not even close. Not even close. You've got four rings and one of the biggest names in the sport. I like. Well, even in terms of like right now, forget the four rings, but right now in terms of the balance sheet, positive or negative, it still is a dramatic positive, in my opinion. The only What's the negative of Draymond Green right now? Put aside what he's already done for the team. The negative would be... Unavailability. Unavailability and a diminishing skill set with a big contract. And yeah. the other piece is he turns off some fans okay. with his antics. The positive is he's still a good player. He's still a top 
whatever defender, 5, 10, 15, however you want to couch that. And he is your most important player's right-hand man. And your coach loves him. And your owner loves him. And a majority of the fan base loves him. And he's good for the gate and the bottom line. So, to me, put aside the past, the net balance sheet of Draymond Green right now on January 9th is still a net positive. Yeah. And it's not even close. Well, it's funny to me when people, and there's like guilty as charged with what I'm about to say. People will be like, well, you guys love him because he, he, he creates content for you every day. Two to six. Yeah. I Two mean, to six. I love him. Okay, but what are you all doing watching Warrior Basketball? What do you think that is? What do you think it is? Like, you think it actually matters for life and death? Who wins the basketball games? Or do you enjoy content? That's all it is. I enjoy wins. Of course you do, but that's because... Outside of the winning and the losing, I uh, enjoy what you're talking about. But the wins is just the result of the reality television show that we're watching that we want to continue to produce more content. Why are we excited about the 49ers? Because they got to the end, and guess what? (gasps) There's more content. But also, they're exciting, to your point. The Giants is a great example. If you ask me right now what their record was this past year... I probably would get it wrong, and I think that they were seventy nine and eighty three. Ooh, I think that might, they might have been guess. eighty and eighty two. Uh, Your point, though, is well taken. In that, it doesn't matter what their record was because they were an absolute bore. They were a one point three on a scale of one to ten in terms of exciting. They were so boring that you knew exactly what it was. Seventy nine and eighty three. Seventy nine and eighty three. It's my business, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good for business. Yeah, that's, um, man.